everyone! I'm so excited that it is finally here. Today I have the brand new lens from Sony, the G Master 35mm f1.4. Today we're going to be doing a first look. We're going to be testing out a few things with this lens. We're going to do some Atmos autofocus tests out here in nature with the birds. We're going to be doing some bucket tests, lens flares, checking out the chromatic aberration, having a look at 100% crop unedited photos. So I really hope you guys enjoy watching today's video. One of the first things that I noticed about this lens when I unboxed it is the size and weight. It is surprisingly tiny for what a high-end lens it is. It reminds me a lot of the make of the G Master 24mm f1.4 and I also have the Zeiss 35mm f1.4 with me as well so here they are side by side so you guys can see the size difference between the two lenses and also we'll be firing off some comparison photos between the two as well just to see the difference in sharpness and image quality. So the G Master the 35 1.4 has a 67 millimeter thread and the Zeiss 35 1.4 has a 72 millimeter thread. Let's get started with some autofocus tests. So I have the Atmos Ninja V here with me and we'll be using two cameras today. I have the Sony a7C and the Sony a7 III. So first up we'll have the a7C and we'll be doing two tests here today. So first up I want to try out the IAF and see how the tracking is with both camera bodies to see how fast the lens is with tracking movement um, and me doing some silly things in front of the camera. And the second one we're going to do is an autofocus accuracy test. So Dan is going to take 30 photos of me on each camera and we'll see how many shots are in focus out of each set. Just in case you're new here, we don't do super scientific tests. These are just real world experiences. Uh, whatever happens, happens and we'll see how it all goes. One of the reasons this lens is so exciting is that, in case you don't know, the 35mm is my favourite and most used focal length. Since I shoot Sony a lot, my go-to 35 was the Zeiss 35mm f1.4, which is becoming a little bit of an old lens now. While I still think it is a beautiful lens, I am really excited for the updated G Master version, which we are taking a look at today, and I can't wait to see what it can do. During the IAF test, I found the lens was working lightning fast on the a7C. I tried my absolute best to lose the focus point, but it always kept up with me no matter what. You can especially see how fast it is in those shots where I jump in and out of the frame where it has to focus on the background first, then on me as I get into the shot. The autofocus was working really well on the a7 III and was very fast as well, so you would have no issues doing photo shoots on this combination either. The a7C just has the newer autofocus system, which is why it was so ridiculously fast. During our autofocus accuracy tests, again, these are not scientific, I like to test gear as if I'm out on a photo shoot on the field. On the a7 III, we had 27 out of 30 photos with critical focus on the face or eyes. And then on the a7C, we had 29 of 30 photos with critical photos. 29! This was the shot that was out of focus while I was moving very quickly towards the camera. And a shot like this with my arm in the way still had focus on my face. So we found this flower field, or maybe it's a weed field. I don't know, it's purple and it looks really cool. So Dan and I are gonna take some photos of each other with the 35 1.4 and the Sony a7C. So if you could stand here. Oh, that looks so pretty there. Even with your glasses, it's still focusing on your eye. <laughs> the first thing I noticed while selecting these photos that Dan and I took of each other is how sharp these images are. I'm actually blown away with the amount of detail this lens captures. It's very, very sharp and I would say it's definitely sharper than the Zeiss 35 1.4. Do you want to do a sitting shot there too? Like right up against the flowers? Not just a crouchy.
Do you want to face your legs that way? Even in the images where we're not looking at the camera, where Dan was wearing glasses, or the shots from further away of me towards the end, all the shots still had critical focus on the face. I also noticed that there were so many photos to choose from that were in focus, so from my experience so far, the autofocus accuracy was great and something I feel like I could rely on for a client shoot. Should we do one where I'm further away and there's more purple? Maybe if you're here and I'll go up there. Something else I wanted to mention is that it could have just been this day, but I didn't really notice much chromatic aberration. In the photos I took of the Zeiss lens for the lens flare examples, there is the tiniest amount of purple fringing towards the top of the lens, but you can only see it by zooming in to 100% and really pixel peeping. I will have to do some more shoots with it in different lighting situations and locations to see if anything changes with that. So while we just took those photos there in backlight, neither Dan nor I could get a lens flare in our backlit shot. So my next mission is to try and find a lens flare and to see what it looks like. So I want to get into like the harsh sun. Just gonna try taking photos of Dan while he's filming me. I was like, I got one. No, that's my fingerprint on the, on the screen. It was really hard to see the flares on the back of the camera in the super bright sun because they are actually quite subtle. So here is a little collection of all the lens flares I could capture on the day without a lens hood. There are a few different shapes from sharp flares to softer looking ones. I really like what they look like and I like that they're not super prominent in the photo. Honestly, not bad considering how sharp this lens looks. I haven't looked at the photos on the computer yet, but you would hear in my voice over what I thought of the sharpness of the images. So next up, I wanna take a comparison photo between these two lenses. So I'm gonna shoot this little field of weeds or flowers, whatever, in the sun here. So it's nice and backlit. And I'm gonna try and get the, hello, the exact same shot on both lenses. So I'm gonna stand about here and get those two flowers in the shot. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over. Okay, and now we are on the Zeiss 35 1.4 and I'm gonna take the same shot with the same settings at 1.4. And then we'll do the same thing at 2.8, maybe in the shade, so we have a different shot to look at. And then I will switch over to the G Master. It feels so weird saying the G Master 35. And I do believe I'm being convinced now that the G Master is going to be my next go-to. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the G Master to F2.8 and take the same shot. So I switched over now to the Sony a7 III and the last thing that I wanna to do today is test out the bucket. So I'm gonna take a couple shots of our weed slash flowers <laughs> and we'll see what the bucket looks like. Whoa, this lens feels so tiny on the a7 III. I got really used to shooting it. It's such a compact kit on the a7C. On the a7 III, I feel like you've got a really good grip on like the camera body now. <gasps> Butterfly, no. Oh, we've got some good tree bucket here, the backlight. I personally love what the bucket looks like. It's so clean, well-defined and round. The G Master 35 f1.4 has 11 aperture blades and also it has a minimum focusing distance of 27 centimeters in autofocus. <gasps> wow, what a great model and 25 centimeters in manual focus, as I was taking some close-up shots of the flowers here and there, so I wanted to let you guys know. 
There's also like a spiderweb behind it and everything. So that is all we have for today's video on our first look and first impression on the Sony G Master 35mm f1.4. I'd love to know what you guys think so far down in the comments below and also I'll be doing of course plenty of portrait photo shoots with this lens in the near future so if there's anything in particular that you guys want to see from a photo shoot with this please let me know down in the comments as well. But as always thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week so I will see you all next time. Bye!